Hi everybody, happy Monday. I hope you're enjoying some sunshine wherever you're located. This is Mickey Ostrowski from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana and I'm hosting today's Front Porch Series broadcast call on mathematizing children's books. This call is sponsored by the National Center on Quality Teaching and Learning, otherwise known as NCQTL. So let's get started. Today's guest speakers are from the University of Washington, Bothell. Allison Hintz is an assistant professor. Her research and teaching focus on mathematics, and in particular, Allison is interested in how to engage children in mathematically productive and socially supportive discussions. Joining Allison is her colleague, Tony Smith. Tony's an, assist, an associate professor, excuse me. His teaching and scholarship focus on content area literacy assessment, instruction, and professional development. So as someone who still reads with her almost 14-year-old son at bedtime each night, I'm really excited and looking forward to what Allison and Tony have to share during their talk. The title of today's broadcast talk is called Mathematizing Children's Books, The Joy and Wonder of Mathematics in Favorite Stories. So I'll turn it over to Allison and Tony. All right. Well, thank you so much. This is Tony. And um, Allison and I will be taking turns um, talking through some slides about mathematizing. Um, so I'll go ahead and start out. Um, Allison, did you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our talk today is called Mathematizing Children's Books, uh, Discovering the Joy and Wonder of Mathematics in Favorite Stories. Um, so just a little bit about it. Um, reading and being read to is a favorite pastime for many children at home, in school, and at the library. So while stories and books cultivate a love for reading, they can also nurture joy in mathematics. Um, so today, we'd like to share our current research in classrooms about mathematizing and talk about how we've integrated shared reading and ex shared reading experiences with discussion of mathematical concepts through a process called mathematizing the literature. We'll also uh, share some examples of books for mathematizing as well as the perspective of a primary grade teacher who's been implementing the mathematizing process in her classroom. Okay, Allison? So in our study of mathematizing read-alouds, Tony and I are bringing together lines of research from mathematics education and literacy education. And those are mathematizing, mathematical discussion, and shared reading experiences. So Kathy Fosno and Martin Dolph use the term mathematizing in their study of young mathematicians. And they describe mathematizing as a process of inquiring about organizing and constructing meaning with a mathematical lens. So we take up their ideas about viewing literature with a mathematical lens. Also informative is the large body of research on the importance of mathematical discussion in children's learning of mathematics with understanding. Suzanne Shapin and her colleagues have a wonderful book called Classroom Discussions, Using Math Talk to Help Students Learn in which they write about the importance of inviting children to talk about mathematical concepts, procedures, and problem solving in order to help students understand mathematics more deeply and with greater clarity. So building on that, then shared reading experiences, including reading aloud, are a significant component of literacy instruction and also a powerful way to promote language and reading development through interactive discussion and response. Uh, reading aloud, for example, um, discussed by um, Doug Fisher and his colleagues, uh, allows teachers to model decoding, sense making, and strategy use while also providing engaging literacy experiences that increase motivation and also foster a love of reading. The purpose of our work with mathematizing is to integrate these elements, um, so mathematical discussion and shared reading experiences, uh, to explore children's books in a fun and engaging way. So our experimentation with and learning about mathematizing has really been side by side with teachers, most often primary teachers at an urban elementary school uh, here in Seattle, just south of town. And at the school, we've focused on mathematizing as an instructional activity during school embedded professional development. And these teachers have been our partners in co-developing and innovating with the mathematizing process. So through our work with teachers and our own research and teaching experience in elementary schools, we've developed a three-step process for mathematizing books for use in shared reading experiences. The first step is selecting reading materials to use. 
we found that books fall into three, text, three types, text dependent, story enhancing, and illustration exploring. Knowing the way in which mathematical ideas are presented in a text is an important first step in planning a mathematized shared reading experience. Um, Allison will describe these three types and show some examples over the next few slides. The second step is to explore the book with children, blending shared reading with mathematical concepts through discussion. To prepare, teachers identify the plot, theme, or central idea in the book, note the key math concepts, and plan for stopping points and thoughtful questions along the way. Teachers have found it helpful to jot these questions on sticky notes and place them on the pages where they wish to stop and discuss math, the story, or both. This keeps the mathematizing experience engaging and on track so the momentum of the story is preserved. The third step in mathematizing is extending thinking and understanding after the shared reading experience is finished. Teachers supply prompts for response through discussion, writing, or drawing. Children use these opportunities to continue exploring mathematical ideas in the book, and the work they produce can be used to gauge conceptual understanding. So we're finding that nearly any story offers opportunities to mathematize. And we're coming to learn that different kinds of texts offer different mathematical opportunities. For Tony and me, as we sat with a large pile of books, um, one of the questions that emerged that really helped us think was, how prominent is the mathematics in the book that we're looking at? And from that, three categories of books have emerged. And we're calling those text-dependent books, idea-enhancing, and illustration-exploring. And so in the next few slides, we wanted to describe each of these text types to you. So text-dependent books feature mathematical concepts to the degree that the plot or the ideas in the story can't be fully understood without also understanding the mathematics. And an example of a text-dependent book is Double Those Wheels. So if we were sitting together and had a chance to read this story, we'd open it up and we would discover a monkey who's delivering a pizza, and he keeps bumping into trouble and has to change his mode of transportation. And each time he does so, the number of his wheels doubles. So I'm going to read aloud the first several pages to us. One lone wheel comes wobbling through. Double that wheel, and you've got two. Pant, pant, puff, puff, what a chore. Double those wheels, and you've got four. As we can hear, doubling is central to this story, and we would really miss out on something if we didn't make sense of the idea of doubling. You might also be noticing features of the story and the illustrations that support children in thinking about the idea of doubling, such as the wheels shown at the top of each page and how those wheels double from one to two to four. If we were mathematizing this book with children, before we flip to the next page, we might pause to wonder, how many wheels do you predict will come on the next page? And how do you know that? So idea-enhancing stories offer opportunities to deepen students' understanding of the story by highlighting mathematical ideas. For example, Understanding the story of the very hungry caterpillar and his week-long eating adventure does not require mathematical thinking. However, a first grade teacher that we work with chose to have her students keep track of how many things the caterpillar ate as she read the book aloud to her students. So you can picture a sea of students sitting on the floor with clipboards and paper and pencil and creating their own recording strategies to keep track as she read. You can see some of the students' recording strategies here on this slide. After the story, the class engaged in a lively discussion about their recordings as they came to consensus that the caterpillar ate 26 things. So keeping track enhanced the students' experience with the story. They realized he ate a lot. Um, it was also a great opportunity to practice mathematical things, such as counting, discussing strategies for recording and organizing information, and writing and solving equations. Idea enhancing can also be used with informational texts or nonfiction texts. For example, this story, Cactus Hotel, describes the fruit of a saguaro cactus as 2,000 black seeds. We could pause 
to marvel at that number, 2,000. We might ask children, I wonder what 2,000 seeds looks like. Do you know how to write the number 2,000? And we've found that mathematizing nonfiction books is often somewhat more apparent because they typically contain numerically based facts like 2,000 seeds. And at other times, we might just want to pause for a moment to explore the illustrations or images in the books that we're reading together. So the snowy day is, a, is an example. So in this classic book, um, I might pause and notice the footprints. I might say, let's count the footprints. How should we count them? Together, we might notice something about this situation. In this context, we can count the footprints by twos. I would ask questions to help children jump outside this context and think about abstractions. I might ask, what numbers can you count by twos and reach? What numbers can't you reach when you count by twos? This illustration would help us explore counting and reasoning abstractly, weaving together mathematical content and practices in a book that's about a day in the snow and not necessarily math. Another example comes in the Madeline series. Um, you remember that the girls are often shown in rows. And so if we look at these two pages from one of the Madeline books, um, we look at the girls organized into rows and we look at the girls scattered about in the piazza. And we can notice how it's much easier to count when there's structure. So we could count the 12 girls by seeing two groups of six or six groups of two. So <clears throat> Put Me in the Zoo is a book from my childhood. Um, the bear-like creature wants to be in the zoo and tries to impress by doing all sorts of things with his spots. In this picture, he happens to have five spots balanced on his nose. I might pause and ask, what do you notice about the spots on his nose? What are all the ways you might see these five spots? By counting one, two, three, four, five. Uh, by looking at two and three, or three and two, four and one, or one and four. We would celebrate all the different ways to make five in this particular illustration. And similar to uh, this book with the spots, Mo Willems has a series of books about elephant and piggy, which young children love. This one's called There's a Bird on Your Head. And this illustration similarly supports thinking about five, but it really funnels your thinking about five in a particular way. This lends itself to seeing five is made up of two and three. And thinking about combinations of five is a really important idea in early numeracy. Last here is an example of a nonfiction text about jungles. And we can see a chameleon here. And we might pause with a student or a child as we were reading to engage in some discussion about how animals use patterns and shapes and changing colors to disguise themselves in nature. Here's an example of mathematizing in action, selecting, exploring, and extending. In this case, a kindergarten teacher selected Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons, a book that fits into the text-dependent category. The teacher decided to explore the story by focusing on number, identifying four, and ways to count to four, both important to understanding Pete the Cat's life. On one sticky note, the teacher has written, let's count Pete's buttons by ones, by twos. On another note is the question, what does a four look like? draw in the air. When she read the story to her students, she knew where to pause to talk about Pete the cat and number concepts in a meaningful way that added to the story and engaged her young students. After reading and discussing the book, she extended the experience by having students draw self-portraits with four of something on them, like bows or pins or badges or patches or pockets. So teachers who've mathematized books, either new books or favorites, have been pleased with the way math ideas and discussion can be integrated with shared reading experiences that are engaging and fun for their students. As one teacher said after mathematizing a book for her students, I read that book all the time and I never thought of doing that with my students. They loved pausing to discuss the math in the story and I could see they were developing important mathematical concepts. This kind of positive response has encouraged us to continue our research. While our work at the elementary school level is moving forward, 
Allison and I hope to expand the scope of our research to include younger children and learning experiences outside school, including public libraries and other community settings. As we continue our work, we encourage teachers to grab a book, jot down some mathematizing notes, and jump into a lively shared reading experience with students. We're amazed by the wonder and joy of mathematics that literature cultivates, and we hope that you will be too. On this last slide, um, Tony and I have put our contact information, and um, we also have a citation for an article that we wrote recently about mathematizing that's in the reading teacher, and we also listed beneath the um, references that are cited in our presentation. And we thank you so much for inviting us to present today. Um, if you try any of these ideas on, we would love to learn from you. We would love to hear from you. Well, that brings us to a close of this broadcast. I want to um, thank all of you for joining us, and in particular, thank Allison for, and Tony for sharing their expertise and their ideas with us about mathematizing children's books. So thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful um, week, and I hope you get to enjoy some family time, all of you, and maybe read a few books with nieces, <laughs> nephews, grandchildren, or your own children, and think differently about them. Thank you right. all. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.